match ended, and uh, that was it. So was it a pinch? Was it a swipe? Was it a rotate? Uh, was it a double tap? You tell me. You're the programmer. Um, frameworks take that out of the hands of, uh, take it out of your hands, and they do it for you. So you can just create a much simpler code. Data packets, the being able to persistently store, proxy, sync uh, data from either JSON feeds or YQL feeds locally, uh, being able to have local models, um, just like you have models on server if you're doing server-based MVC, uh, pretty important also to do you know, things like built-in validations. You can take a look at our stuff um, here. Here's our QR code, um, but it's on Sentry It'll kind of run you through the gamut of stuff that you'd expect from a mobile application interface. OK, so that's sort of section one. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit now about uh, actually implementing mobile websites uh, versus mobile web applications and talk a little bit about the evolution of where stuff and where work gets done. Um, you know, it's and this is actually happening on desktop as well, which is we see there being because of HTML5 and because you've got local state and because you've got these local databases, you've got all these rich applications that you can do really kind of amazing stuff both offline uh, and online. That a lot of the the logic of your application, a lot of the interactivity is moving off the server and moving onto the client, and that's at some point you know kind of. Um, evolving the way that you build your servers. And your servers basically turn into just big API proxies and, and resource you know, security, validation, and, and resource servers. Um, so today, you know, for desktop, if you're using Rails or you're using um, you know, ASP.NET, MVC, your models and your controllers are, are all on the server, and you've got these views that you just pump down you know, to the browser. And the browser really doesn't do much except interpret a fairly fully formed experience uh, that the server has provided to you. And you can evolve that by saying, well, I'm going to provide a slightly different experience for mobile versus desktop. But there's kind of a problem, which is the responsiveness and the bandwidth that you have on mobile means that the idea of every time you touch a goddamn thing in the mobile page, it triggers a round trip server, not good. Not a good experience. Um, so that's why you want to change things. So even oh, just a, a, an aside, which is, you know, you can detect mobile. Here's mobile foo on GitHub uh, that tells you is it a mobile device um, for um, .herb. So I think that's Rails. You know, being able to switch to the desktop site, um, being able to design things so that. Um, just because you switch to the mobile site, this is a you know, XKCD uh, cartoon. You know, just because you switch to the mobile site from the desktop site shouldn't mean that you lose what the user was trying to accomplish. Um, so servers, web servers are awesome. They're stateless. Web servers are terrible. They're stateless. Uh, and not being able to uh, provide someone with a resource just because you switch them over is bad. So thematic consistency. If you've got... Um, in the spirit of REST, meaning that um, you know, uh, a fully qualified domain <coughs> or a fully qualified URL should point to a unique resource. Um, and it should sort of mean generally the same thing if it's on a .mobi site versus a .com site. Uh, not particularly easy to figure out all the various mechanisms that you could switch. Um, I would just go to this uh, URL and take a look at, um, this is MobiForge. This is a recommended way, algorithm for determining which type of mobile experience you should be serving. Should it be your full desktop site? Should it be the mobile website? Uh, and how do you evolve and transfer state between uh, the two things in a, in a way that makes sense? But, you know, just like um, you know, the idea that you have to have a round trip to the server every time you interact with a mobile web app is not very good. Um, if both desktop and mobile are really moving to a point where you are um, communicating with um, data channels, basically, back from um, the desktop uh, to, um, to the server. I think I might have actually missed my flow here. Apologize. So um, the idea that 
um, we're moving from a URL structure that says um, every unique resource is um, at a fully qualified URL to something that your hash bang, which basically says, here's the, the root URL, and then we're going to pass parameters with a hash bang to JavaScript, and JavaScript's going to do an AJAX call constructed on the basis of the parameters that are after that hash bang uh, to get you the specific resource. So if the stack of the present is renderings on the desktop and everything else is on the server, we're kind of moving to a model, I think, um, where at least for rich web clients, rich mobile web clients, you're moving to where the user interface, the business logic, and the storage can all be on the, on the, on the mobile device. Right? It's sort of back to, to client server to some, some degree. Um, and all you're doing is really syncing the data, syncing data changes back to the server side. And as we all know, sync is a well-characterized, easy to program um, paradigm. So a couple other notes, uh, brand consistency. Um, you know, one of the things that you get from, um, you know, this is the TechCrunch mobile site. <laughs> this is the NFL.com blog site. Uh, they actually have the exact same uh, default styling. Um, I don't know whether they just took some boilerplate or they happen to use the same agency, but you know, this shouldn't happen. <laughs> you, know, you should actually have a mobile experience with a brand, you know, associations, a theme, and an experience that actually matches what your brand associations are trying to be. Just because it's on mobile doesn't mean that it's, it should be, it doesn't have to fit into a, a, single, um, uh, a single template. I mean, it's kind of like, it's sort of like GeoCities. You know, it's like weird. Um, you know, you can, um, this is just a, a plug for, um, for um, one of our guys, uh, service, uh, Tiny Source. Uh, it actually will dynamically give you um, image, images that are sized appropriately for whatever mobile device you're on. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a free service today. Um, that uh, saves you a lot of time, particularly if you're you know, a smaller developer and you don't want to mess with image magic. You know, if there's a couple things I want to leave you with, really, is that um, mobile devices are different. Uh, they're not just small desktops. You can't just take your desktop website and shrink it down and, uh, and have it work and have it make sense. Um, mobile users are different. Uh, they're trying to do different things. They're not just looking for your desktop site. So after all that um, talk about the web, and the web is amazing, right? The web is about creative freedom. It's about economic freedom. It's about anyone can start anything in their dorm room. They don't even have to ask permission from anyone. And then, you know, a couple of years later, you can um, sue people in, uh, in court, uh, arguing over who actually started the company. Um, but <laughs> that's the freedom of the web. Um, but uh, you know, if you do like the App Store distribution model, if you have a consumer app, it doesn't mean that you have to develop in native technologies. So um, I'm going to talk now a little bit about going hybrid, um, which is using native shells to take your web application, wrap it up, and distribute it uh, through an application store. Android Marketplace or uh, iPhone. So the best knowns are PhoneGap, NimbleKit, WebWorks, which is for really BlackBerry, AppMobi. This is um, libraries that allow you to take uh, your web apps, wrap them, and get devices, uh, uh, get access to device APIs. So just one more, um, which is an awesome, actually I, I, I love this app. It's uh, an app that was built with Sensu Touch, uh, and it's basically, um, kind of art and experimental uh, short films, uh, browsers. Uh, there's some really cool stuff on there. Uh, it was built with um, Sensu Touch, but then uh, not put out in the web. It was uh, wrapped using uh, PhoneGap and uh, distributed through the App Store. So you can pull out your iPad and use it um, today. Why do you do this? Well, it's because uh, you sometimes you really want an app that can use a camera or can use an accelerometer, uh, although that's now available on the website. Or through a web page, um, but uh, use des you know, notifications or use um, things like contacts. So, doing mobile right. Um, everyone loves the app experience. Um, 
native development, particularly if you plan to address the largest possible audience cross-platform, uh, kind of sucks. Right? You need too many skills. You need to do too much rework. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. We think this is the year of the mobile web. All of the phones are there. You can build applications. We have um, over a quarter million downloads of, of Sentry Touch alone. Uh, PhoneGap has sort of similar levels of, of downloads. Lots of people are doing this. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, if you're trying to build Angry Birds, so you're trying to build a flashy, um, uh, no pun intended, uh, flashy, graphics rich, you know, performance intensive application, um, well, you probably want to target the iPad 2, not the iPad 1. But uh, apart from that, uh, you, you probably don't want to use web, mobile web technologies this year. But for everything else, for the other 85%, 90% of applications, including most games, mobile web's awesome. And it's, it's HTML5 and CSS3 and all its associated technologies that really make doing this um, a viable alternative. And the frameworks, you, know, you can certainly roll it yourself. Um, but frameworks are here to help. And um, there's a good community around each one of them that are willing to help you get started and uh, get successful. So I made it with one minute to go, <laughs> which is the main objective, not to communicate anything. Uh, so I'll take questions now um, if you want to ask about any of the, the stuff that we're doing at Censure or about mobile web. Um, yep. Yeah, sure. So we actually have, um, if you go to uh, sentia.com, uh, so there, there's two ways you can do it. You can go to uh, Open App Market, which is a um, kind of a web store um, for, for mobile. Go, go to on your mobile device, and you can download apps uh, and see what you know, people are doing. You can also see what people, the best of what people have built in Sentia Touch um, from our site. So go to sentia.com slash product slash touch slash demos. Um, you can uh, take a look at it. And you can also take a look at some of our um, uh, CSS animation capabilities at our animator product as well. There's some really awesome stuff you can do you know, with CSS animations, um, sprite-based animations that are really rich and kind of you know, duplicate a lot of stuff that you can do in native. So the, the question is, if we need to deliver on, on multiple browsers, how do we know which browsers actually support this? So I don't think really anyone can help Honeycomb. Uh, yeah, Honeycomb is really a beta um, right now. I have seen a demo of it running on, th on Honeycomb 3.1, and they fixed all the problems. So uh, I'm, I'm uh, very optimistic about the prospects for the, the Motorola Zoom once it gets patched. But uh, that, you know, I've said it in the it got shipped too early. I don't know what they were thinking. Well, I do know what they were thinking. They wanted to beat the iPad 2. But still, um, they, they should have just held it uh, for like another month or two, polished the browser, polished all the other stuff that was not finished, like the, you know, the card excess. And, and uh, I'm, I'm much of I'm a believer that there's, even though you think that it's better as a product management guy, like get it out there and then we'll just deal with it. like. It's just better to hold until the quality level is up there because you know consumers a lot of times just don't give you a second chance. Now, if you're Google, you get a second chance, but most people don't. So, <laughs> just one man's opinion. Uh, so, um, in terms of browser support, you know we have the, su the, the support matrix on the site, but it's basically Android 2.1 and above. It's iOS, um, iPhone 3 and above, and really 3GS sort of gets good. 
um, iPad, iPad 2. iPad 2 has a lot more memory, so you can just do more stuff in the browser. Like, basically, 